And now that we have some idea of what it is, let's go ahead with our original goal, right? Which was to find that delta theta, which is good. Now, what do we mean by good is something that we'll discover now, right? So, for ease of notation, let's just call that delta theta by u. I don't want to write this delta theta every time. Uh, so then from Taylor series, we have uh, the following, right? That we have uh, L of theta plus, <coughs> and that's, this is where that epsilon comes into play, right? I was saying that we want the difference to be small, right? So I am at some point theta, and this is some point theta nu, right? This is what this point is. And I'm saying that it's just a small distance away. And this is where this eta is important, right? It makes sure that the distance is small because we know that the approximations are good in the small neighborhood, okay? Now, this is L theta. Now, what are these other terms here, right? This eta is fine, right? That's our small, uh, uh, that multiplication will keep happening everywhere. Now, this here is that seems to be the dot product uh, between two quantities, right? Now, u I have already defined here, right? u is the change that we want to make. So, that's nothing much to explain there. But what is this other quantity that you see here? And let me just underline it with a different color. So, this quantity. So, we'll try to figure out what that quantity is. So, let me clear off the slide. Now, what that is, is the gradient, right? And that's where the name gradient descent comes from. But let's try to understand what that gradient is, right? Uh, so, now if you have a function, right? Let's say x square. I have y is equal to x square, then I know that dy dx, this is called the derivative, all of you know this from high school, which is 2x, right? So, this is fine, this everyone knows, right? But now, suppose I have a function y is equal to w square plus b square, right? Now, this is a function of two variables. So, now I can say and notice a change in notation, right? It's not d now, it's do is 2w and do y by do b, it is 2b. And what have I done here? This is known as the partial derivative. So, I have taken the partial derivative of this function once with respect to w, the other time with respect to b because these are the two variables on which the function depends. Right? So, these are the partial derivatives. So, this is derivative when you have a single variable function. These are partial derivatives when you have a multivariable function and you are just taking the derivative with one variable treating the other as constant. Right? That is why the derivative here disappears because you are taking the derivative of uh, the b square part with w and it does not depend on w. So, hence the derivative will be zero. Right? So, that is the partial derivative. Now, the question is what is the gradient then? The gradient is nothing but just the collection of the partial derivatives, right? So, that gradient in this case would be 2w, 2b, right? So, it is the collection of all the partial derivatives is called the gradient, right? And in this case, I have only two variables. So, I will just have two partial derivatives. So, I will collect them and I will get the gradient vector and the gradient vector is a two-dimensional vector in this case, right? So, that is what this quantity is. You have the loss function theta and you are taking the gradient of theta, the, of the loss function with respect to theta and we know that theta is nothing but w comma b and this theta is also w comma b. So, this is just a vectorial way of writing it that you are taking the partial derivatives with respect to w and b, you put those partial derivatives in a vector, that vector is called the gradient and this is the quantity that we are using to denote that gradient and now it makes sense because you are taking the gradient of a function which is a function of a vector with respect to that vector, right? That's what, uh, that's how you should read it. Right? So, this is what this quantity is, right? Now, for this discussion, I think I can stop here because this is where I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to cut the formula at the linear approximation. But let me not do that. Let me just go a bit ahead and also try to tell you what this quantity is, right? Which is Now, here if I ask you what is the second order derivative, that means I am going to take the first derivative and again take the derivative with respect to x again and that is uh, going to be uh, 2, right? So, this is the second order derivative. Now, what this is, is the 
gradient of the gradient right that is a bit uh, confusing to understand. So, this is what your gradient looks like it is a vector collect containing the partial derivatives. Now, again you are taking a derivative of this vector with respect to your parameters which is nothing but taking the gradient with respect to theta right. So, what would this look like? So, <coughs> you have uh, two elements in this vector right. So, for each element you will take a derivative with respect to w, you will take a derivative with respect to b. For the second element also you will take a derivative with respect to w and you will also take a derivative with respect to b. So, what you will get is dou square l by dou w square right. So, you had the first uh, partial derivative, you are taking the derivative of that again with respect to w. So, that is what you will get. Now, the same partial derivative you will be taking a derivative with respect to b now. So, you will have dou b dou w and similarly you could fill, fill the remaining two entries here right. So, this would be dou b square and this would be dou w dou b right. So, the way you should remember this is the following right. So, when you are taking the derivative of a vector okay with respect to some another vector okay. What are you trying to do? You are trying to say that if this value changes, how much does this value change? How much does this value change right? And if this value changes, how much does this value change? How much does this value change right? So, the derivative of a vector with respect to a vector would thus be a matrix right and what would the dimension of the matrix be? If this was m dimensional and this was n dimensional then this would be an m cross n matrix right. So, if you had for example, three elements in this vector okay, and you are taking the derivative of that vector with respect to two elements. So, what would happen is that each of these elements suppose these uh, two elements that you have here are your parameters w and b right. So, each of these elements would be a function of w comma b and hence you can take that derivative. So, when you are changing w, you want to see how much does this value change because it is a value function of w comma b. So, how much does this value change? How much does this value change? How much does this value change? Right? So, you are asking for three calculating these three changes and then we change the value of b. Again, you want to change how much does this change? How much does this change? How much does this change? Right? So, there are six values that you are trying to compute. So, then it would be a 3 cross 2 or 2 cross 3 depending on how you are uh, uh, seeing it right. So, it could uh, so it that is what uh, it would be right. So, that is what and this second order derivative is called the Hessian uh, uh, matrix and then similarly you could imagine what would be here right. There would be a third order uh, derivative here and you can again imagine that you have a matrix and now you are taking the derivative of every element in that matrix with respect to a vector and so on right. But that that I know I will not go that far I will just stop here although even this we do not need for the current lecture. Okay. So, I hope that is uh, clear. So, uh, partial derivatives, derivatives sorry derivatives, partial derivatives, collection of partial derivatives is the gradient, the gradient of the gradient is the Hessian right and here are a few things to note now right. So, if you have a scalar quantity right. So, if I have a function which is y is equal to x square okay then the derivative would be 2x. So, if I were to compute this at a particular value of x, then I will get a scalar right. So, derivative of a scalar with respect to a single variable is a scalar. But now, if you have a vector or if you have a quantity uh, x square okay, uh, or let us just say x square plus z square right, then I can take the derivative with respect to x and I can also take the derivative with respect to z. So, then I will get a vector right. So, the derivative of this would be a vector which will be basically the gradient right. So, that is that is what uh, we are uh, uh, understanding now and this is where I am going to draw the line right. So, my argument for that would be that eta is small. So, eta square is going to be even smaller hence I can ignore this eta q would be even smaller. So, all of this I can ignore right. So, since eta is small I am just going to cut the derivative uh, cut the formula here and I will just use the linear approximation. And we have just seen previously that when eta is small, a linear approximation is good enough right. So, I have reason at least I have shown you geometrically that I can do that okay. So, this is what I am going to do okay. Now, uh, 
this move, right, this is the move that I have made. I was comfortably at some value of theta. There was a certain loss there and I decided to make this move. Now, this move would be favorable only if what is the condition that I would want? I have moved and I would call the move to be favorable only if. So, only if this value is less than this value, right? Otherwise, it's not favorable. I was at a certain loss. Now, I have moved. And if the loss increases, then that's not a favorable move, right? Why I should have, I would have better stayed there, right? So, I would like a U only if uh, the new loss is less than the previous loss, right? So, that's the condition that I want. So, what I want is that if I do this subtraction, if I subtract the new loss from the old loss, then I should get a value less than 0, which is a simple, I mean, it's just another way of saying that the new loss is less than the old loss. So, that's all I'm saying, right? And now, if I just look at this equation here, what is this quantity? So, I just take L theta to the other side and I am left with this, right? So, what I am saying is that this quantity should be less than 0. That is what I am effectively saying, right? So, I will just uh, delete some stuff. So, this is the quantity that I want to be less than 0. If I take L theta this side, then that is the quantity that I get and that is just equal to this quantity, right? So, if I want this quantity to be less than or equal to 0, that means essentially I want this quantity to be uh, less than 0, right? And I have omitted the eta here because eta is a positive scalar, right? That is a, uh, yeah, you, we do not take a negative scalar there. So, eta is positive. So, that will not affect. So, I can ignore eta here and this quantity should be less than 0, okay? So, that is what uh, I have arrived at from the uh, Taylor uh, series. And why is this, uh, why am I interested in this? Because this is a condition which depends on u, right? So, now I am, what is being told to me that you have to select a u such that u transpose the dot product of u with the gradient vector would be less than 0. Only then your u would be good. So, this is a condition that has been imposed on my u. Now, using this condition, I want to find a good u which not only satisfies this condition, but satisfies this condition in the best possible way, right? And I will tell you what best possible way means, right? So, what is the range of this? Right? So, this is the dot product uh, between uh, two vectors. I think this should not be there. This is the dot product. So, what is the range of this? Right? So, let us try to understand that. So, let beta be the angle between uh, u transpose and the gradient vector. Then we know this. Right? This is the cos of the angle. This is just the formula for the cos of the angle. And this quantity which I was interested in luckily shows up in this formula, hence I am interested in it, right? So, this is what uh, cos beta is and the good thing is that cos beta is bounded, right? So, that means this quantity is also bounded, okay? Good. So, if I multiply throughout by this, the denominator that you have here, I am just calling it k so that I do not have to write this uh, large quantity every time. So, this is what I get, right? So, the quantity that I am interested in, I know that it lies between minus k and k, right? And I do not care about uh, the positive values of this quantity, right? I want this quality quantity to be less than 0, right? So, I just care about the negative side because I want, my condition was that u transpose into this gradient should be less than 0. That is the condition that I have, right? So, I am interested in the values which are less than 0. So, now if I am interested in values less than 0, I should ask this question, right? How less can I be? And the more less, the better, right? Because what is, what is this quantity? This quantity is the difference between the new loss and the current loss, right? And I, the more negative this difference, the better, right? That means my new loss is as low as it can be from the current loss, right? And uh, when would this be? When would this difference be maximum? when uh, this quantity is as low as it can be, right? Because this quantity can be as negative as it can be and this is that quantity, right? It can be as, this is how negative it can be and when will be that negative? When the angle or the cosine of the angle is minus 1 because this condition is directly being derived from here, right? So, if the cosine of the angle is minus 1, that is when I will get the most negative value for this quantity which is my quantity of interest. Right? And when would the cosine be minus 1? When the angle between the two vectors is 180 degrees. Which two vectors? The vector u and the gradient vector. So, that is where I get my u now. I want u 
to be at 180 degrees with the gradient vector. That means I want u to be opposite to the gradient vector. Hence, in gradient descent, and this is something you would have heard a hundred times, I move in the direction opposite to the gradient, right? So, this is how that uh, formula or how that rule comes. We started off with the Taylor series. That gave us a certain condition on what a good u should be. Then we've pushed that condition to be to its limit, right? We wanted it to be less than zero, but we said, let it be as less than zero as it can be. And we found that that happens when this happens, okay? And that happens when beta is equal to 180 degrees and beta is the angle between these two vectors. So that happens when u is exactly opposite to the gradient vector, right? So that's why you move in the direction opposite to the gradient vector. Let me just delete this is more negative, is the most negative, right? Not just more negative, is the most negative when cos beta is equal to minus 1, that is when beta is equal to 180 degrees. 